It's been a while since I've shown Photoshop content on this channel, but you do not want to miss today's video because you're more than likely going to learn some new things with powerful shortcuts in Adobe Photoshop. So the first shortcut today relates to a way that you can quickly adjust the opacity of a specific layer, and that's to a specific measurement. So if you guys press V and then a number from zero to nine on your keyboard, the opacity will change of your selected layer as you can see here on my text. Now V plus one is 10%, two is 20%, and so on all of the way up to zero, which is 100% opacity. Now again, I'm gonna select my image layer and show you how quickly and how easily you can change the opacity to increments of 10. Yeah, this is a really nifty way to be doing this. So that's the first shortcut, let's move on to the next one. So staying with this image, let's quickly grab the clone stamp tool, which I'm sure most of you are probably familiar with. Now we can press Alt or Option, which is gonna select an area to clone. And that's pretty basic stuff, right? And wherever you drag your cursor, the clone sample is gonna to move to that location. However, if you hold down Alt on a PC or Option on a Mac, and then Shift and then click, you will change where on your sample the clone is. That's pretty neat. But also, if you expand on that, you can press the brackets on your keyboard, and this will change the size of your clone sample as well. These two shortcuts, in combination with the clone stamp tool, I find are very, very handy indeed. To demonstrate the third Photoshop shortcut, I have an image of a guy cut out, so we have an alpha channel background. If you select the layer and then hit shift, as well as alt or option, and then backspace or delete, we can fill all of the opaque pixels on an image with the foreground color in the color palette. And so in my case, that would be a blue. This is a neat little time saver that you will find useful in your workflow. But whilst we're here, we can simply press the forward slash key on the keyboard, and this is gonna lock out all of the transparent area in the layer specifically. And then that means that we can come in and use effects, brushes, or whatever we want to use, and they're only going to affect the opaque pixels. Again, this is simply by pressing forward slash on your keyboard. So let's stay with the brush tool for a moment, but this shortcut does work with most tools in Photoshop. Let's say I press B for the brush tool and I want to go and use it, but then I want to move the layer and so I press V for the selection tool. And then I need to press B again to reselect the brush tool. However, if I simply just hold down V for the selection tool when using it, and then once I let go, Photoshop is gonna revert back to my previous tool, which is the brush tool. Now this is a neat workflow time saver and it does work with most tools. And as you can see, it just improves and speeds up that workflow. So again, staying with the brush tool, you can see here that I've got a hard brush selected. On your keyboard, you can use both of the brackets and this will change the size of your brush, which is pretty handy and I'm sure many of you probably know this anyway. But we can also hold down shift while using these brackets and this will alter the hardness of your brush between soft and hard, as you can see on my screen here. So let's move away from brushes for a moment and let's head into the typography side of things with Photoshop. Now for all of you type geeks out there like myself, this one is great for kerning. So in Adobe Photoshop, we can hold down the Alt or the Option key and then press the left and right arrows on the keyboard and this is going to edit the kerning between two characters within your text. Of course, this is very useful for those of you who understand kerning and who wish to save time while manually making that kerning more visually appealing. I could probably spend ages and waste time just editing my kerning, which would render those shortcuts obsolete. But anyway, let's move on. This next shortcut is something I find myself using all of the time, and that is by pressing Ctrl or Command, Shift, and then A, which will bring up the Raw Camera Filter menu. Now this is important to me because I use this menu so much in my workflow for editing images. The Raw Camera Filter FX has such a wide set of options that can you know, help you with color grading, and it just improves an image very, very quickly. And so for me, it just seems logical to know the shortcut for this menu. And if you're like myself and you do use the Raw Camera options quite often, 
it probably will be useful for you too. Now I'm sure you've been there before where you've selected something with a selection in Photoshop and then you either accidentally deselect it or you make some kind of weird error. Well, you can just press Command or Control with Shift and then D and this will bring up your previous selection. There are so many Adobe Photoshop shortcuts, but these are just some of the ones you might not know and which I personally find very, very useful. Which one was your favorite? And if you want to learn something else about graphic design, do click a video on screen. And until next time, guys, design your future today. Peace.